All right, so we back again, little pod, you know, NFL coming up. We did a uh, last episode, we did the NFC East. Today we're we'll doing, you know, the NFC North preview. Um, Before we start, though, um, we're going to be bringing something new in a few days. You know, we're going to be starting on Fantasy Football League. We're going to drop it all on the socials, how you can get in it, man. But there's going to be some money in there. You know, we're going to be playing for a prize now. You know what I'm saying? So. We're going to, you know, put all the info on the socials, man. Y'all tap in with us. And, yeah, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm win, win the whole league. That's just me. If I get Jettas, if I get Justin, oh, I'm going to win the whole thing. But we'll see. Nah, it's fantasy football, best time of the year, though, low-key. Not going to lie. But, yeah, so today we're just doing the NFC North preview. Um, Talking about, like, who who we think could be the – or should be the favorites. Um. Talking about, you know, quarterback under the most pressure. And then we're going to talk about, you know, Justin Jefferson, where he ranks amongst all the wide receivers. And then we'll talk about Justin Fields and Jordan Love at the end, kind of what we expect from them. So um, first off, you know, who should we – or who should be considered the favorite in the to win the division? For me, I think it's still the Vikings. But, you know, I feel like this is one of the most difficult – divisions for at least for me to predict because you know I think all four teams are not that great you know not none of them are Super Bowl contenders you know none of them are going to be awful either in my opinion so I think all four are going to be competitive throughout the season you know obviously being a Bears fan you know I might be a little biased there but like I feel like all four teams are going to be competitive but for me the Vikings definitely are the favorite you know winning the division last year um, got Justin Jefferson, pretty elite offense. So I think I think they should be the favorites, especially you know just what they did last year, going like thirteen and four. I think, although it was, I think a, a little bit of a fluke. You know they won so many one score games last year, but I think I do think the Vikings deserve the right to be the favorites going into the year. Oh, the Vikings are absolutely the favorite. You know I think. You know, all teams, they're competitive, but, like, it's going to be competitive. But I think the Vikings still are on a different level. And part of that is just their offense. I think, you know, I understand they lost Adam Thielen. I understand they lost Dalvin Cook. But, you know, when you have Justin Jefferson at wide out, I think, you know, you just have, the you just have you know, that upper notch. And I think the addition with Jordan Addison, I think he's going to be able to, you know, make plays right away. I really like his game. But also, I, I gained a lot of respect for Kirk Cousins after watching the quarterback on Netflix. Great series. You know, I've heard next year it's going to be like Josh Allen, um, Jalen Hurts, and Daniel Jones. So yeah, I, I like what they're doing. Shout out Payne Pay Manning for putting that together. But I, I gained a lot of respect for Kirk Cousins, and I think he is a good leader. And I think that it's just a matter of time. You know, I don't think they have that Super Bowl contention type team right now either. But I think it's a matter of time, you know, once they – start building more around them and stuff like that, and that defense get patches up, I think they could be really good, but I think they are the favorite. And uh, second for me, um, second for me is just kind of tough. I think, you know, that second spot is kind of like wide open for any other team, you know. A lot of people are on the on the Lions this year, like, and I, I think the Lions could be really solid. Like, I really do like the receiving core. You know, Amal Ross St. Brown's really underrated. And, you know, Jared Goff had a solid year last year. And, you know, they got a couple more young receivers. Jameson Williams would be back, you know, fully. So I do like I do like the Lions, like, potential. Um, I just don't see them, like, I don't know. It would be hard for me to see them winning a division just because, like, of how bad they've been for so long. But, you know, I, I do think they have a chance to win the North this year. Um. Yeah, but, you know, going back to that Vikings point, you know, I think the real reason why they're not true contenders is their defense. Um, and also Kirk Cousins isn't, you know, the top-tier type quarterback either. So, but, you know, their offense is elite with Jefferson. And I, I do like that pickup of Jordan Addison, like you said, too. It's just the defense, you know, is what's holding them back from being, you know, that contender with, like, the Eagles, the Cowboys, and the, and the Niners. So, for me, I think – the Vikings are the favorite. I think the Lions are probably the second best team going into the season, but I think the Bears and Packers have a chance to 
you know, fight for that second spot too. Yeah, like I think, you know, he, the Lions won a lot of the people's respect with how they finished the year off, especially the last game, beating the Packers, not letting them, you know, make the playoffs. You know, that was a big game. Also, Dan Campbell, you know, he's he's a he's a great leader of men, if you if you would like to call it that. Like he clearly knows how to lead, you know, young guys in the locker room, players and grown men. And he's just got he's a motivator, you know, and all the things you said, like Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams coming back, Aiden Hutchinson, I think he's gonna be a star real quick in this league. I think he's got great potential. So, you know, it sounds like they're building something. That's the thing. But it also sounds like you know, you still got firepower with the Bears, though. You got obviously Justin Field showed some promise last year, had some big time plays, made some elite plays. You know, he's just got that highlight reel type ability. And then adding DJ Moore, I like that because that gives your young quarterback, you know, a guy, an outlet, you know, who when he's in trouble or when things are struggling, he can get him the ball. So I think the Bears still need to patch some things together before I can really consider them like a playoff team. But I do like what they're doing in, in terms of, you know, putting, you know, weapons around their, you know, quarterback who they think can be their franchise quarterback. And then with the Packers, I feel like we just haven't seen much of Jordan Love, although he did look good in that preseason game, though. But we just haven't seen, a, a, you know, much from them. But, you know, they still have, you know, a great defense, in my opinion. They still have a good uh, two man punch in the running game with, you know, um, Aaron Jones and uh, A.J. Dillon. But, yeah, we just don't know, right? You know, so I think um, the Lions have shown the ability, you know, in the, that they can compete, and I think people respect that, so I think that's why they're second. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Packers make that jump or the Bears make that jump. But I think the Vikings will definitely win this division by, like, I'd say, like, three to four games, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um yeah, I, I, the Vikings definitely are that team to beat for sure. Um, I think you know so much is unknown with the Packers. I do, I do think um, if Jordan Love is just okay, they can be a team that could potentially sneak into a wild card spot. Like I know, sound. Hey, I know. Define sounds- like define like okay, because like okay to me sounds like n- below average. You know. If he's like, if he's just not like one of the bottom ten quarterbacks in the league, I think they could be decent. I don't know. I feel like he has to be good, you know, for them to make that jump. It, yeah, because Got like, so many young players too. Like, like he has to be good. Like, I just think that's how the the league is turning in right now. I think you have to have a good or or a great quarterback to make the playoffs, you know? I mean, unless you're, like, the 49ers and you have, like, a ton of pro bowlers on your defense and you have, like, weapons like CMC, IU, Debo, you know, Kittle, like, unless you're like that, I think you do have to have a really good quarterback or, a like, a good quarterback to make the playoffs. So I think he has to come out and show people, like, yeah, like, you know, they didn't fluke on me, you know, by picking me. You know, I learned a lot from Aaron Rodgers an all-time great, and I know what I'm doing out here. So I think he has to be – I think he has to surprise people. I, I don't think he can just be okay or, like, average. Yeah, that's fair. I, that week one game, that was, that's a big game. Like, I know it's just week one, but, like, Bears-Packers, it's, it's going to show a lot, like, from both fields and Jordan Love. Um, And that – yeah, I kind of just want to go into that next topic about, like, which quarterback has the most pressure – I would I would say it's definitely Justin Fields for me. Um, you know, he's obviously not won many games as a starter, although he has shown a lot of, you know, promise and potential with obviously his legs, but you know, I I just want to see him, you know, develop as a as a passer, especially like in the pocket and you know, with his reads and stuff. Um getting DJ Moore obviously helps a lot. You know, Claypool, DJ Moore, Mooney now, you, you have some okay weapons pretty good pretty good weapons so I think offensively you know for him just developing as a passer um because you know he's a lecture running the ball so him and Lamar are probably the top two right now 
running the ball as well as Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. But so there's no questions about that aspect of his game, but just from a, a passing standpoint and trying to get this team to win, you know, win games really, like just trying to become that playoff caliber team, I think there's a lot of pressure on him this year. And I'm not saying we have to make the playoffs, but like just for him to, you know, grow and, you know, at least get like six, seven wins, double your wins from last year. Cause you know, as a quarterback, you need to win games if you want to keep your job. So that's just why I think he has the most pressure for real. I kind of I kind of disagree. I think I think Kirk Cousins has the most pressure in this division. And here's why. I think, you know, you hear the things about Kirk. Obviously, I talked about respect Kirk, but like in primetime games, he has historic, you know, he hasn't, you know, he hasn't won. You know, they were they were regarded as one of the best teams in the NFC possibly could make the Super Bowl last year and they lost first round to the Giants. And he's only won one playoff game, you know, in his whole uh, career, I believe, or maybe two. But I think he has the most pressure. I think, you know, they know Kirk, people know Kirk and he can throw touchdowns, right? He might have four touchdowns and two interceptions. He might have five and three, but you know, he's, he's going to, you're going to get what you can from Kirk, but it's about like, can he lead an offense? Can he lead a team to that Super Bowl contention? Because last year I felt that they had the pieces around him. I think getting Kevin O'Connell was a great mix. You know, he, he was a, his, uh, his coach and, uh, Washington helped him out a lot. I think offensively they really expanded that offense and they started to gel, obviously. I mean, they were seven and one at one point last year. But I think he has the most pressure. I think people don't expect Justin Fields. Um I I wouldn't expect Justin Fields to make the playoffs, right? I don't expect Jared Goff to lead the Lions to the playoffs. I don't expect Jordan Love to lead them to the playoffs. Now I expect Justin Fields, like you said, to improve as a passer. Yeah, but he's a young quarterback. Like, that's going to take time. He's starting to get weapons around DJ Moore. I think for Fields, I think it's more his pocket presence and whatnot and just, you know, being comfortable in the pocket as well as taking read, as well as reading the field. And But that takes time as a young quarterback. And obviously his bread and butter is running the ball and making things happen off the, you know, making those off-platform throws. So I think pressure, I think I think like Justin Fields needs to improve, but I think who has the most pressure? I think people are going to look at Kirk Cousins having the most pressure. Yeah, it's just like different. Their team was garbage last year. Yeah, everything everything around him was garbage. Like if you put if you put Justin Fields in Brock Purdy's situation, Justin Fields is going to thrive. You know what I'm saying? But he had no one last year. You know what I'm saying? So I think. You know, I would say this year I want to see improvement. Like you said, double your wins. I think winning six to seven games, I would say probably seven to eight games would be, you know, a very, you know, big milestone for the Bears because you're improving. I think the year after this year is when I'd be like, he's going to have to have some pressure and we're going to have to see if he really is that franchise quarterback. But I can't really say that now because he hasn't really had the team. Like Kirk Cousins has been on some – solid and good teams and he just hasn't performed in the playoffs or primetime games yeah that's definitely fair um yeah i mean but i can oh you want to see you want to see your quarterback you know make plays and make moves and I, lead the team there's nothing wrong with that that's just, your team brother we uh, just, we just you, never bro. we just never had a franchise guy like that you know what i mean yeah like, i know you want that but i think <laughs> you just got to give him a little time i think i think he's yeah. i think he's good for it yeah, I, I I do like. We've seen the WR ones that have gotten traded to, you know, quarterbacks that are young. Those quarterbacks have thrived, and I'm not saying Fields is going to be Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts, but those guys, you know, when they got Diggs and Brown, you know, big difference, you know. So, especially nowadays with how much, you know, offense matters and passing, you know, quarterbacks matter. Like, you need to have those elite weapons. So. I think, you know, DJ Moore is definitely going to help him. Um, but, yeah, Kirk Kirk definitely has a lot of pressure, like you said, just from, you know, not performing in big games and, like, just going on a playoff run. But, yeah, I, I think it's it's just different types of pressure, you know. Obviously, Fields doesn't have the playoff pressure or anything like that, just the development and stuff. But, 
Whereas Kirk, you know, we've seen him put up crazy numbers before, but not have. He's been in wins. the league for twelve to thirteen years. You know, like if if there's a time to win, it's it's going to be in these next two to three years. You know, for him, so mm -hmm. he's just got to show that. You know, some at one point, like like there was a stretch where Kirk was like playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the league last year. You know what I'm saying? And then a primetime game comes or that playoff game versus the Giants come and it's just kind of it's just kind of absent. So, you know, it, it's going to be interesting. The Vikings are an interesting team, man. It, they're really hard to every year. I think they're really hard to pinpoint where they're going to, you know, you know, be, you know, they could be they could be just like last year. They could be 13 and four. They could somehow be like, you know. Nine and eight, you know, it's. Yeah. Just, they're just really unpredictable, you know. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, speaking of the Vikings, um, next topic about Jefferson and like where he ranks. Um, for me, it's number one right now. I think. Oh, oh, easily for sure. After he made that catch against the Bills, bro, like that was that like I it was just like no one's doing this right now, and you know, you know who I who my favorite wide receiver in the league is. Yeah, CD, Devontae. Lee, but, but Devontae Adams. Yeah, you Devontae. know, Tay is my guy. But after last year, after these past three years, what he's been able to do, like he's breaking records, breaking Randy Moss's records and stuff like that, breaking Vikings single season records. Like he's just he's on another level right now. So it's it's hard to think that he's only what he's only like twenty four. Or something like that, 24, Maybe 25. 24, yeah. Like he's only gonna get better. So crazy. Like he's him and Jamar Chase on the same team, bro. Like, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. But yeah, I, I mean, do you think that catch is better than Odell's? So you gotta consider, right? Like you gotta consider like the circumstance too. Like it was fourth down for Jefferson's they, like, it's tough to say because like o Odell's catch was like he was completely like, like he caught it like he does it regularly. Like the way he caught that ball one handed, he caught it like it's something he's practiced before, he's done before. With Justin Jefferson, it was more like a I gotta go make this play, big time play. And bro held on to it with like two fingers. So like I think it's hard to say. I'd probably lean Odell for me, but both the catches were just yeah. – I don't know. That Justin Jefferson one, I actually don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> Justin Jefferson one was like fourth down. No, like, it, it was a huge play. Kirk I, Kirk just threw it up to him. And he he's like, Je Jefferson down there somewhere, I just threw it. <laughs> yeah, like – and also, like, I might have to lean Justin – I could I could see where I could lean Justin too because his was in traffic, you know. OBJ's OBJ's is insane, but it was like a little bit wide open. But Jefferson's was in traffic. But OBJ, I just think, I just think I would lean Odell just because the way he like like it was reached back, bro. <laughs> like he reached back, <laughs> he was able to touch his hamstring, like like it was insane. Like he was like. He was horizontal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was crazy. And it was it was defensive pass interference, if I remember correct too. So yeah. Like mm -hmm. both are I'll, those are probably the two best catches. So y'all comment down below which one. <laughs> y'all y'all let us know which one. But uh obviously we both think Jefferson's the best. Who do you think is second right now to him and like has a chance to not overtake him this year, but just well, second is easily Mara St. Brown. No, just like out of all the receivers in the league. Oh, um, for me, it's still Devontae Adams. Devontae. I yeah. know people could say Tyreek or uh, like Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, but for me, I think, you know, for what uh, Devontae Adams has done these past few years, I'm not just going to negate that. Like, bro is at a different level. It's, like it's for two years, usually, usually with the wide receiver, like the way Justin Jefferson is right now, I feel like it's no question he's the best. Like Devontae Adams had like two, two years straight where it was like no question he's the best wide receiver in the NFL. Mm -hmm. 
So I got to respect that. How about you? What you think? I yeah, I I still probably lean Devonte just a little bit. I think Jamar's right there, and I think Tyreek's right there too. I think those are the four best for me. But you know, going from Rock, I mean, Derek Carr is a solid quarterback. There's no doubt, like he's solid. But he ain't Aaron Rodgers, and Devonte still put up crazy numbers with Derek Carr. And he's downgraded. Now he has Jimmy G. Now he has Jimmy G, who's and in that Raiders organization, we've talked about this so many times. It's a mess. It, it's, it's chaotic. Yeah. It's a mess. And and you know you can't build something with that team either because you keep you know putting new parts together and putting new things together and whatnot. And it's just not, it's just not like forming the way it needs to. Like you know you don't really know what you're going to get each year with them because there's a coaching change or there's a a quarterback change or there's a a new wide receiver leaves or something like that. Like you never really know what you're going to get with them because it's always a new roster and it's a new team. So I think that that's their, that's their issue right now. Like they need to build a culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. Especially in that division now with just like the chargers with, you know, their franchise quarterback, you know, the Broncos have Sean Payton now and then obviously the chiefs. So I'm not throwing the Broncos in there. <laughs> I'm not throwing. I mean, they've been. We're not, we not throwing that. We. I'm, I'm just saying, Chargers. I'm cool with Chargers, bro. But Chargers and Chiefs, I'm cool with that. But Broncos. I mean, Broncos historically though have been pretty good. Like the Raiders have been. What does that mean historically? Like, like we're talking about this year. Well, like yeah. the Broncos were horrible last year. Russell Wilson was horrible last year, and he hasn't <laughs> yeah. looked good. In the, he hasn't looked good in the preseason either. Oh, I don't think he's going to be good this year. I don't either, bro. I think they're going to be better because of Sean Payton, like you said. But, like, I think the Raiders are probably just as good, if not better, than the Broncos. And that's not really saying nothing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, let, let, the Broncos, man. I don't know, man. I, 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 was, I was looking I just, at Twitter, bro. I was looking at Twitter. I was just scrolling through. And I was just like, yep, it is confirmed that Russell Wilson is cooked. <laughs> but yeah, bro, I don't know. But yeah, Tay, I think Tay is number two. Jet is definitely number one. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, um, man, I just hope the Broncos suck. <laughs> I'm just not a Russell yeah. Wilson dude. Yeah, like I don't know if I like. Like, I don't really have anything against the Broncos. It's just that, like, the whole uh, – what was that Broncos country thing or whatever? What was that? Broncos country, let's ride. And that whole thing that he was trying to do, I'm just like, you need to focus on football, bro. You're in a new organization, bro. Stop like, saying all this, like, corny stuff, bro. That picture of Melvin Gordon looking at Russell Wilson is the funniest thing I've almost ever seen, like, in the se- in a season before. Like, he was looking at him like, I wish you would, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of don't want the Broncos to be good. I don't really know why. Maybe it's because I listen to a lot of future. But I think like <laughs> I think like Russell Wilson just kind of corny. Like I respect him. Like he's a Hall of Famer. He's got a Super Bowl. And he's a he's a great guy, bro. He's it's a just... great guy. Like I know he's a great father. He's a great guy. You know what I'm saying? I I, I respect him. It's just that like the whole Broncos country thing just, just made me want to throw rocks. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But, all right, back to the NFC North, though. Uh, let's talk about Justin Fields, if he will be, if we think he'll be a top 10 quarterback this season. Um, I'll let you go first on that. So, I don't, he's got a chance to. Because he can do so many great things, but I don't think he has to be a top 10 quarterback right now. So I'm going to go with, I'll probably go with no, just because I think the quarterback position right now is like 
on top. Like, it's super quarterback heavy, especially in the AFC. But he's got a chance to be, though. I think his ceiling is definitely being a top seven quarterback in the NFL for sure. But just just he's still young, though, you know, the, the development and whatnot. And I think, you know, they haven't built the right pieces around him as of lately. I like the DJ more, but they still need to build more around him. But I think once he has those weapons, he can be that type of player. But I don't know about right now. Because you got I, I don't want to rank my quarterbacks right now because I think we'll do that, you know, another time and stuff like that. But just like off the rip, you got like obviously Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, Herbert, Lamar, Hertz, um, what you call it? Um Lawrence. Lawrence. Um, and then like that, and then those last two spots are kind of like up for grabs, right? So it's just kind of one of those things where like you know, I don't know. I do think, yeah, I, I agree. I don't – can he be sure? Like, if he does what he says and he, he – I think he said he's going to throw for 4,000 yards. Like, that's his plan. If he does that, then probably. He be, like, he's got the – he's got the star potential, like the highlight reel to, to be that. I just feel like if he did that, it would be extremely impressive just because he doesn't have much around him, you know. And that mm-hmm. O line is still an issue for me. Yeah. yeah, I agree. But yeah, he he's shown the potential, like obviously as an athlete and just a runner. But you know, it, it's tough because there's so many great quarterbacks right now. So I, I'm leaning towards no, and I don't think he has to be. You know, I just consistent improvement is just the main thing for me. And you know, last year at the end of the year, he. They didn't win, but like he had some really, really good quarters and games and definitely showed that promise. So just more of that. And I think also going into year two under, you know, the head uh Eberflus and and Luke Getze, I think is gonna help him too. You know, obviously last year, his second year of the league, it's he was his second head coach and stuff like that. So now he's got more familiar familiarity with the offense and stuff as well as adding some weapons, I think he'll definitely be better. But top 10 is, you know, it's it's up in the air for sure. So I don't know. But top 15, I'll give you that for sure. Oh, he'll be top 15. I'll for stamp sure. that. I'll stamp yeah. that. Yeah. He'll probably be better than Dak. <laughs> that, that's cool. I don't know. He's, he's got definitely, he's be. got way he's a way higher ceiling than Dak for sure. He's got a chance to be better than him like this year. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I hope, but... I hope Dak somehow turns into a super superhero, but it's just hard to really think that after these past few years, man. But um, so I don't know if you've been watching Hard Knocks. Did you watch Hard Knocks with the Jets? I have not yet. No. So. Obviously, you've heard about, you know, the um, Sean Payton, Nathaniel Hackett thing. You know, Sean Payton went on, you know, and said, you know, Nathaniel Hackett, you know, probably did one of the worst coaching jobs ever. It would not. And Aaron Rodgers, you know, obviously that was his offensive coordinator in uh, Green Bay. Um, and now he's his offensive coordinator in New York on the Jets. So, you know, in Hard Knocks. You know, they ask him, they they ask him about it and they show the interview and he just talks about how, you know, um basically he was just like, Don't talk about my coach, or he doesn't need he he shouldn't be putting like, you know, another man down, like he shouldn't have to feel that way. And then um Robert Sala, who I actually like, I think Robert Sala is a good leader of men and a good coach as well. He was just like saying, like, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. So week five. I want to talk about week five, the Jets and Broncos face, you know, I will put, I would put it on everything that the Jets win that game. I really do. And it's, it has nothing to do with Russell Wilson. I know we were joking about him earlier. I just think that like Rogers is one of those dudes where you, you start to piss him off. He, he, He's one of those dudes, he got that it factor. He's going to come ready to play. So I can't wait for that game, but I think that's going to be a big game. But who do you got in that game, though? Because it'll be, it'll be a good game because they've been 
I'm going the Jets. Like, I've seen it too many times where Rodgers just comes in and, like, on a mission, just takes your – like, just destroys your team. Like, like he's, every time – He's got that it factor. Like, those – now he hasn't, you know, obviously won big in the playoffs, but like in terms of regular season, big games, like he's gonna come ready to play, and that'll be. They got a good defense in Denver too, so like. They do. They sure. I do. still, I still think Rodgers would put up some like three hundred yard passing game, you know. Yeah. Two or three touchdowns type performance. The Jets are going to be an interesting team because I think they're going to be in the same situation the Vikings were in. Like they're going to be in a lot of close games. And I think they have a really great defense, you know, but when you have a guy like Aaron Rodgers, you're always going to be in football games. You know, it's going to be close games. So it's going to be one of those things where, like, they're going to have to really, you know, click at some point because they, they're they beginning – I believe their, like, start of the year is not too easy, I believe, but they're going to have to, you know, be good. So it, it'll be interesting, but, yeah. I think – um We'll see who eats their words, man. We'll see if Sean Payton puts in a scheme and shuts down Rodgers, or we'll see if Rodgers, you know, like you said, destroys your team. But I'm excited for that game and this NFL season as well. That game's going to be – for week five, that's going to be electric. But, yeah, the Jets, their schedule's brutal too. Like, I know they got, like, the Bills, the, uh, the Cowboys. They're in a like, tough the- division, man. And the Chiefs right before that game. So, like, those are three really tough games they're, right before the Denver game. So, they're, like, um, they're, they're in a tough division, I think. Because I feel like, yeah. I feel like with them, like, even the Patriots are, hard, are a hard team to play at home or, or on the road. And that's mainly because Belichick, you know what I'm saying? He's always going to switch things up. He's always going to try to confuse you. We've seen, him have success with that. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you wanted to touch on, bro? Like, because I know this is your division. Uh, No, that's really all – I have for real. I think, you know, it's the toughest, it's one of the toughest divisions to like, just to like what to expect. Oh, okay. 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 Not like, not like teams wise, but like, I was going to say, but yeah, at least in the NFC, like, I think the other divisions are pretty predictable to some degree. Not the NFC East. Yeah. NFC East too. Yeah. Because we're unpredictable. The Cowboys are unpredictable. The Giants last year obviously are unpredictable. You know, mm-hmm. so. But yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, man. You know, we'll see y'all next time.